to families of consequence, the risk isn't entirely financial as it is reputational. That is something most investment sell-side professionals never really capture here, and is what I've learned transitioning from using more institutional investors with an entirely different agenda to larger families of consequence who have provided more resources than any individual fund or asset management firm could. In my private conversations with them, I've learned what they really want. Why should these wealthy families be subject to the same pedestrian liquid asset classes as their wealthy brethren on the other side of town, and why not? One of my longtime confidence in industry legend is Alan Snyder. Snyder has been a pioneer in all things alternative lending, going back to his days at Dean Witter when he was one of the three who created the widely used Discover card. Today, Alan runs a boutique money management business called Shinnecock Partners out of an unassuming Wilshire Boulevard office. His income fund is collateralized by Sotheby's and Christie's quality high-end art, which he calls, quote, an anchor to windward for wealthy families and endowments. He shares 50 years of wisdom succinctly. Quote, think about it. Yale, who's probably had the best endowment performance of anybody, has 89% of their capital in alternatives. Harvard has been no performance slouch either, as 60% of its assets are in private equity and other alternatives. Quote, the question for many then is, what do you know that your local wealth advisor doesn't? I answer these questions for them, and I'll answer them for you too.